Good evening, and the news tonight is that at virtually the 11th hour, the London Film Festival has withdrawn the picture with which it planned to open the celebrations on Wednesday. A Prayer for the Dying was always a controversial choice anyway, because its subject is the IRA, which fact had already caused considerable disquiet even before Sunday's atrocity at Enniskillen. An IRA movie to be given a gala premiere on, may I remind you, Armistice Day? It was a prospect that upset a lot of people, and they were not particularly soothed by the revelation that the star of the film, Mickey Rourke, plays a gunman who's renounced violence. The new director of the London Festival, Sheila Whittaker, who's just taken over from The Guardian film critic Derek Malcolm, had intended to override the protests and go ahead with the original plan. Ennis Callan, however, changed all that, and I think quite properly. Nevertheless, A Prayer for the Dying will, Miss Whittaker hopes, still be shown later in the festival, in which case the chances are that it'll stir up yet another row. Quite apart from the sensitive nature of its content, it's provided a fraught and unhappy start for the new regime at the festival offices in an entirely different way. It was the first time I can remember that any festival had intended to kick off with a picture that had already been publicly disowned by its director, Britain's Mike Hodges, and just as publicly criticised by its star, Mr Rourke. Mr Hodges, indeed, was so affronted by the way the producers, the Samuel Goldwyn organisation, had cut his work that he demanded, without success, that his name be removed from the credits. Now, this, of course, has nothing to do with Miss Whittaker, but for her to persist until today with her plans to launch the festival with such a film in such circumstances would seem to indicate either great boldness or remarkable perversity. As to this, you may be able to decide for yourselves, because the other day, acting as a sort of cinematic ACAS, we spoke to Miss Whittaker, Mr Hodges and producer Peter Snell, to see if we could find out what all the fuss was about. Normally people make a picture together and therefore you reach by consensus a final edited form. In this instance I was not consulted. The pic I handed the picture over in February and was shown it again in the middle of July and whatever excuses they've offered up, they said that my version was longer, which it was not. They've said it was an IRA tract, which it was not. They have said that we rewrote the script, which we did not, and so on. They've came up with all sorts of excuses. The simple reason is that they took the film away in February, they re-edited it and added music, and they left my name up there, and that is not on. He's a very emotive individual, and uh, that probably is where I misjudged the situation. I, it's hard to conceive of anybody working as hard as he did, and as I said, there are some wonderful directorial moments in the picture. It, it, he's done a good job with the picture, so it breaks my heart to see the guy go out and, and bury us all, basically, with the press. I mean, that seems to be, to be very self-serving. I mean, it, uh, the motive clearly has to be, I want to do some damage. I have some principles. Maybe the people I'm dealing with don't understand principles of this nature. This isn't idealism. This is reality. This is what human beings are actually about. You can't just go around abusing people's creative freedoms in this way. And they have done that. This business of taking his name off it and disowning it is, uh, is just not practical in our business. Uh, anybody who puts up six million bucks to make a movie has the absolute right at the end of the day to change that picture any way he pleases. We saw the film way before this controversy ever reared its ugly head. And it's very difficult to change your mind about a film when you realise that there has been some disagreement on, on the production of it. It's still the same film as far as we're concerned. Uh, and we were well along the way of negotiating for the film for opening night. And it, we felt in the end that we had to, to, to proceed because we still think it's a very interesting movie. And I don't think um, Mike Hodges himself is necessarily saying that his version was any better. What he's saying is, is a matter of principle, and, and fine. I'm, I mean, right on. I, I admire anyone who's prepared to, to stand up and be counted for their principles. I don't know if that makes matters any clearer, but I dare say the uproar will give the film considerable curiosity value, especially as Jack Higgins, on whose book it was based, says he can't imagine it being any better than it now is, thus bringing him into dispute with Mickey Rourke, who claims that his role has been quite spoiled. But which of these people is right? Well, there, alas, in the immortal words of Butch Cassidy, I can't help you, Sundance, because so far nobody's let me see the film. I can't even tell you how sympathetically or otherwise it treats the IRA. Well, now, which film will replace A Prayer for the Dying at the opening gala on Wednesday night? Sheila Whittaker says it'll have to come as a surprise, which I suppose means they haven't got one yet. Still, having dealt with that kerfuffle, let's steer ourselves into calmer waters with a quick survey of the rest of the London Film Festival. It runs from Armistice Day to November the 29th, and Miss Whittaker has selected more than 140 films from 40-odd countries. Hers is, as one would have hoped, an eclectic choice, ranging from the potentially commercial to the obscure. 
in the following rundown, I've concentrated on the former because those are the pictures you're most likely to be able to see fairly soon and in places other than London. Oh, we think of everybody around here, even if the Scots and Welsh viewers do have to get up in the small hours of the morning to watch the programme. 